Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. My guest was among the very first on a ventilator with COVID. Doctors gave him no hope. I mean, hopeless. But an angel visited him in his hospital room and taught him for three nights. And even the doctors call his healing a miracle. Next. Sid Roth has spent over 40 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. I want to welcome my best friend, the Holy Spirit. Yes. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, make this show supernaturally yeah. natural, yeah. naturally supernatural. Yeah. Pastor Mark Wallace was one of the very first to get COVID-19. The doctors gave him no hope. Satan told him, the battle is just too hard. Come on now, give up. His battle with COVID made headlines all over the world. Tell me about the battle. Well, Sid, it was the most horrendous battle I've ever fought uh, because we weren't just fighting against the disease. We we're fighting spiritual death, spiritual things, spiritual strongholds that the enemy was bringing. And I believe COVID was from the pit of hell. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but the a sense I get from reading the newspaper is it's not a good prognosis when someone goes in a hospital and is on the um, ventilator. Yeah, yeah. In those days, 89% of the people that went on the ventilator never made it off. Mm. And of the 11% that did come off, only one in 100 made it home. And uh, whenever I went into the hospital on April the 9th, I thought I was just dehydrated. I thought they would keep me overnight. Uh, much to my surprise, they wheeled me into the ICU and said, when I've been in the ICU so many times as a pastor, but it felt like I was rolling through into the room where they were sending people to die. And that very night at midnight, the doctor contacted my wife and said, we have to put him on the ventilator. We have to intubate. And my wife said, but what happens if we don't? And he said, he has no chance to live. What happens if we do? He said, he has slim chance, but slim is better than none. And that's the last thing I remember for 10 days because I was in a medically induced coma for the next 10 days. But wait, wait a second. You are a pastor. Yeah. You know yeah. the scriptures. You know the spirit of God. Yeah. But even you were, did you feel that hopeless? I, I did because being there when you're in the midst of all of this and it's an unknown disease and nothing around you is normal, nothing is typical. And uh, laying there in the hospital, I couldn't have any guests. I couldn't have anyone with me. I was alone. I was terrified. Um, everything was shutting down in my body. My liver shut down. My kidneys shut down. My lungs shut down. And the doctor said my heart was beating so fast just to try to keep up that they thought if I didn't die of COVID, I would certainly die of a heart attack, and they only gave me a few hours to live. So what changed that <laughs> death prophecy that was literally given yeah. to you by the doctors? But God. That's all I can say, because uh, on April the 17th, I had been on the vent now for eight days, and the doctor contacted my wife and said he's not going to make it. And something rose up on the inside of her and said, just tell me what has to happen for him to come off the vent. And the doctor said, you don't understand, he's not coming off of it. And she began to pray 
and declare the things of God, the promises over me. She had just gotten a word from the Lord, 2 Timothy 4, 17. And it says this, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known how I was delivered from certain death. And she took that word, hung on to it, got intercessors beginning to pray and said, we need a miracle, we need a turnaround. And three days later, I woke up from the coma. You know, if you're not an example, you could have 10,000 people praying for you, but if one person with faith That's right. is praying, absolutely, a man or a woman absolutely. with a destiny cannot be taken out yeah. prematurely. Amen. Amen. Now, this battle for Mark's life was over a vision that Mark had when he was just 19 years of age. He saw the end time vision of Habakkuk 2.14 taking place. Here's the amazing thing. It was taking place in his lifetime. And that scripture says, the earth will be filled with the glory of the Lord. He says that the vision of what Habakkuk saw back then has started now. Yeah. Be right back. Do you feel as if God's not listening when you pray or speaking back to you? I've been there and so have all of my guests. That's why I want you to go to SidRoth.org slash prayer to access interviews with guests who have discovered how to pray unstoppable prayers. Learn about our free prayer app called God Talk and leave a prayer request so we can pray for you. It's more than time for your breakthrough. We now return to It's Supernatural. Mark's wife was told by the doctor there was no hope for a husband to survive. She was given a vision that literally came from the angel of the Lord. Then Mark had a visitation in the hospital from an angel for three consecutive nights. Mark explain. Yeah. My wife, on the morning that the doctors contacted her and said, he has no hope, one of my intercessors in our church contacted my wife and said, I just had a vision. Now, mind you, she had no idea that I was on the ventilator. Hmm. We had not told anyone that yet. And so, literally, she gets this vision and she said, Pastor Tammy, I saw Pastor Mark laying in his hospital bed and an angel standing at the foot of his bed with his sword drawn doing warfare and making declarations and out of his mouth it was like a pen writing with gold writing all over the walls, the sheets, the, on Pastor Mark, on the floor, it was everywhere. And so when my wife got the news a couple hours later, I wasn't going to live, she said, no, I've seen what God is going to do. There's an angel in the room. This is what's going to happen. And began to make those declarations. And I believe. Excuse me, what declarations? The declaration that I would live and not die. The declarations that, that with long life I'll satisfy you. And that God had purpose and destiny on my life. And the enemy could not take me out of that. And so the prayers were going up. And I believe it opened a portal into heaven, when I woke up from the coma, they had restrained my arms, my feet. I had nothing but a loincloth over me because they had had to pack me in ice to get all of the fever down. My temperature was just going through the roof. And one night, while I'm awake, I'm wide awake and I'm listening, and this echo began in my room. 
and it was this thunderous voice that began to declare, you will live and not die. With long life I will satisfy you. He began to say things like, uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of what you cannot see. And you, you are going to declare the glory of the Lord. And these were the words that were coming out of his mouth. I didn't see him, but I could hear him. I, I, I don't know how anybody couldn't have heard him. But the, but the nurses were coming in. Now, remember, I'm still on the ventilator. And so I can't so speak. You can't talk, right? I can't talk. And I, I look at the nurse, and she's, she's oblivious. <laughs> and I'm like, you can't hear that? <laughs> What's going on? And the next thing I know, she leaves, and the voice kept coming all night long. I never saw him. But I reasoned in my mind, this must be a doctor in the next room that is yelling at the top of his lungs. <laughs> and I thought to myself, Doctors don't do that. He's not operating in much wisdom. <laughs> They've called him here to, to do medicine, not to preach and prophesy all night. I had no idea where it was coming from. And Sid, that went on for three nights in a row, over and over again, all night long. To the point, I actually said, Lord, will you please shut this man up so I can get some rest? <laughs> it, was, it was booming. It was echoing. Oh, yeah, and, Lord, send that man to me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so I am laying there, and at one point, I literally died. I felt my spirit leave my body, and I could look down and see myself laying there. And I, I was so sick. My faith and my humanity was colliding. I wanted to believe. But at that point, I was in such pain. All I wanted to do was die. And I said, Lord, just let me die. And a voice came to me and said in this sweet, tender voice, I've come to take you tonight. It's okay. And I couldn't speak, but up out of my spirit, came a groan, and I knew the voice of God, and I said, that's not God. And immediately when I said that, all of the visions, all of the things, all of the destiny, all the prophetic words that had ever been spoken over my life began to roll through my mind, and it was like I could see a video of all of this playing out. And the next thing that I spoke Again, I couldn't speak, but a groan. I love it that God hears the groan of our heart. And I just simply said, I'm not done. And immediately that spirit of death left. And the next thing I knew, my kidneys started working, my liver started working, my lungs began to <laughs> prosper and do well, and I could breathe. And I'm on the machine, but my numbers were getting better and better. My heart came into rhythm. They drained four liters of toxic fluid off of my body. And God did the turnaround. And I believe it was because I knew my destiny. I knew, and I didn't listen. And so when I came out of this, my doctors declared me to be the miracle man. What did the headlines in the newspaper say? Pastor overcomes COVID. It was supernatural. They wrote the article on the front page of the Sunday Fresno Bee, and they talked about how the power of prayer had absolutely changed everything, and the doctors were calling me a miracle. I, I have a word for you. Yes. And here is my word. You're not finished. That's right. Mark had a dream about the miracles that are going to be released right now in this next segment coming up. I believe one of them has your name on it. Amen. He has an anointing to open supernatural portals for you to know your destiny. Mark will pray for you. Be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural. 
life can seem to glide by in a monotonous rhythm of daily activities. You wake, you shower, you dress, you take care of others and make sure they have all they need, you commute to work, you work hard for eight hours, maybe nine, maybe 10. You commute back home, you cook dinner, you watch some television, you go to bed. It's the same predictable cycle, day after day, month after month, year after year. You wonder, is this all there is to life? The truth is that change is available. There is a greater purpose for your life, something only you can do. There's a plan, a guiding map that has been there since before you were even born. There's a path that was created for you, which you alone can take. Day by day, hour by hour, if you choose to pursue it, your destiny will be revealed. The invitation is there. Will you discover all that life has for you? Do you want to find out what you were truly created for? Do you want more? Are you hungry to discover your purpose? We would love to provide you with a powerful book that will show you the way. Get a free online download of the book, They Thought for Themselves, by logging onto the website, theythoughtforthemselves.com. We now return to It's Supernatural. Mark, what did God tell you about the end time glory that actually has started now? Well, when I was 19 years old, God literally took me out of my body. I was standing at the altar worshiping the Lord one Sunday evening, and God just literally took me out of my body. I shot up through the roof, all up coming out of the earth. I could see the globe below me. I began to look up, and I saw Jesus standing at the throne with a river coming out of his hands. And as it was coming out of his hands, the closer it got to the earth, the more powerful it became. And I was standing at the side of the river, and the Lord spoke to me. There was, it was as if there was an angel to be my guide standing there, and said, jump in, jump in. And I wanted to, but said the distance was so far. And I thought, I can't do this. I looked down the river, and the river was overtaking the banks. So I moved a little further down, thinking it would be easier. And whenever I did, now the banks were even higher, and it was more difficult. A third time, I walked on down, thinking it would be easier, and trees began to jump up out of the ground to where I couldn't even see the river anymore. And the next thing I knew, I had to close my eyes so I could hear and smell the river to lead me right back to it. And this time, I jumped in. I, I said, I know if I don't get in now, I never will. And so when I dove in, oh, Sid, it was the glory of God. It was so amazing. It was overwhelming. It's what I feel right now <laughs> in the glory. It's just so amazing. And he says, I'm pouring out my glory in these last days, and your voice is going to be a part of it. And this was at 19. I knew. I knew I was supposed to be a part of the end time revival and the harvest of souls. And laying there in the river, floating down, I began to call out to the multitudes that were up on the banks of the river. And some would jump in, some would not. But then there was a shift in the river, and the glory got stronger, and the current got stronger, and my voice changed. And now it was as if my voice was a voice of many waters. And now as I beckoned for people to get in, they were jumping in by the thousands. And when they were jumping in by the thousands, they were coming in sick in their body, and they were coming in with all sorts of disease and infirmities. But the moment they got in the glory, they were miraculously healed. I know something about you. I know. There is something in you that says, I know there's something more. I've heard about God since I was this little. I see creation, therefore it shouts creator. Yeah. I see a watch, it shouts someone made it. Yes. 
I want you to say this prayer with me. Because I can't tell you God is real. Only God can tell you God is real. And God is just waiting for you to give him an opportunity. Repeat this prayer out loud with me. Mean it to the best of your ability. Yes. Dear God. Dear God. I've made many mistakes. I've made many mistakes. And I'm truly sorry. And I'm truly sorry. I believe. I believe. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Was poured out. Was poured out. And by his blood. And by his blood. I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. And by his blood. And by his blood. I am healed. I am healed. And by his blood. And by his blood. I have a new beginning. I have a new beginning. And now that I am clean. And now that I'm clean. Because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. Jesus, come and live inside of me. Jesus, come and live inside. Thank you so much for paying the price for my sins. Thank you so much for paying the price for my sins. I make you my Lord. I make you my Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, Mark, you had a dream. I did. What's going to, or vision, what is going to happen right now? Look in the camera and do what you saw. Yeah, I saw the glory of God lifting over this very set and this very moment. I saw that people were diving into the glory of God and coming in into a place where they were going to have encounters with God like never before. I also saw in this dream, I saw that there were packages, there were gifts, if you will, that were ornate and beautiful gifts. And on the label, it said miracles. And it said from God, and then when it said two, it named what kind of miracle the person needed. And all I am is the distributor of what God has done. And today, I believe miracles are taking place. I saw one of the gifts that was the gift of healing of cancer. One person is here watching right now, and you've got pancreatic cancer. And the doctors have given you no hope. They're in your final stages. But I say live and not die in Jesus' name. I curse cancer to its root. And I speak the miracle turnaround. They will write about you and tell of the miraculous turnaround that has come in your life like they have in mine. I just declare right now there's another cancer. There's a tumor on the side, on the left side of an individual. And that can't cancer, that tumor is dissipating even now as we speak. There's a tumor in the back of someone's head. It's a cancerous tumor again, and it is coming to normality. They can't even operate because it is too close to the brain and interwoven. But God says, I'm going to heal you right now. Your miracle is now in Jesus' name. There's one more. One more that I got that was identified specifically, and it was a miracle of someone who has discs in their back that have fused together, and the doctors have said there's nothing even in an operation that they could do, and you're in extraordinary pain, overwhelming pain, trying to, the doctors are saying just do pain management because that's all you can do, but Dr. Jesus is about to touch you, and I just declare Claire healing in your body right now. I command those discs and vertebrae to come to normality now the way God created you to be. And that healing is happening right now in Jesus' name. And you tell Jesus out loud, he already knows what you need right now in yes. this atmosphere. Yes. Yes. I say, yes. God says, yes. all things are possible. Yes. <laughs> Amen. The supernatural of God knows no bounds, and now there are no limits to equipping you to receive your supernatural breakthrough anytime, any place. ISN, the It's Supernatural online network is now available for your mobile devices and smart TVs with this free ISN app. Our world doesn't need another Christian TV network. 
What the world needs is life-changing programs that have a tangible outpouring of God's presence, and people need to be able to access it whenever they need it, wherever they are. ISN makes it possible to meet you right at your point of need with live streaming of programs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right on mobile devices or smart TVs. Or choose from dozens of powerful episodes of It's Supernatural and other exclusive programs in our online library. Just go to your app store and download it for free. Whenever, wherever, God's not limited, and neither is your access to the supernatural of God. Next week on It's Supernatural. What if I told you that the doors that you've been waiting on to open in your spiritual life have already been opened? Hi, I'm Dr. Keenan Bridges. Join me on the next It's Supernatural with Sid Roth as you will learn that your miracles have already been granted. I have proof, and it's found in the blueprint of heaven.